All right. All right, that was really weird. I think we're live. Maybe. For some reason, it wasn't quite working. Yeah, we are live. Okay. So weird. Anyway, we're waiting to get rolling here with Duke and... Duke and Syracuse. Hold on. We have some technical difficulties we are sorting out here, chat. Give me just un momento. Because I can't see any of the controls on the... Like, it's not coming up like an actual stream here, for me, at least. Um, although, it does look like we are live somehow. So, okay, I'm just going to call it good, maybe. No, it's still not working. Why is it not working? Like, I can access it on my phone. Can't access it. Man, this is why I, I gotta say, almost I like t almost like Twitch better than land <laughs> than this YouTube stuff. Ah, okay, now we've got it going. Okay, now it's working. Now it's working, but the game still hasn't started. So, uh, I don't know what they're waiting for at the Carrier Dome. This Kentucky and Auburn game is not going to end anytime soon, and it's you to Kentucky, so screw them anyway. Like, get that stuff out of here. We don't need any of that. Yeah, we are not big Kentucky fans at all. Okay, now on ESPN News. All right. All right, now we are we're roll, we're rocking and rolling here. Make it happen. Here we go. Getting ready. From the Carrier Dome, ladies and gentlemen. Getting ready to rock and roll. I actually don't even know who's calling this game tonight. Other than me, right here. Because it's not it's not Dick Vitale, thank God. Dick Vitale was at Kansas earlier. And it's not Jay Billis, because Jay Billis is over in Kentucky. In any case, there is the tip-off and Duke controlling. Vernon Carey gets it to Trey Jones. With the starting lineup here being Matthew Hurt, Vernon Carey, Goldwire, Cassius Stanley, and Trey Jones. So our standard starting lineup as we've seen it uh, of late. And the first shot is no good. It's a rebound down to Syracuse's. Uh, I didn't actually catch the number on that one. So I'm going to have to – we'll double check that. Oh, it's uh, Sabidi. That's right. And – now the ball in the hands of Buddy Bayheim. Now down to Elijah Hughes. And that first shot by Hughes is unfortunately good. Trey Jones with Goldwire. Vernon Carey. Oh, had post position down low. But Goldwire did not find him. Goldwire, Trey Jones on the outside. Now finds Matthew Hurt, who gets double teamed immediately. And Cassius Stanley going to go for the three on the outside. That's off the back iron. No good there. Rebound down to Gerard. Gerard puts this pass up to Dolajai. Dolajai, who has been a terror for the Blue Devils in the past. Just no fun there. And a quick stoppage in play as the ball is out of bounds.
The shot by the free throw by Dolajai is good for one. And it's good for two. So four nothing. The Cuse at the Carrier Dome, another record sellout, of course. And Goldwire just decides to throw it out of bounds. That is, boy, that's uncalled for. Turnover early in the early going here for our Blue Devils. And Duke deciding to actually extend the pressure. It's sort of like a full court man here. Gets it up to Buddy Bayheim, And Buddy is just going to try to go in the lane. And Buddy can't get it to go down. But Sabidi is there for the rebound. Skews cleaning up in the interior so far. Hmm. These numbers are confusing. Qs has way too many 30-point numbers. And it's a turnover. Verticari running out the floor. Verticari gets blocked. We almost got really excited there for a second. I thought Vernon Carey was just going to go out on, like, just take it on a run out. Most wins in Division I history for Coach K. And number two is Jim Beheim, of course. So between these two, there's basically like 2,000 wins between the two of these guys. Even if you count the ones they took away from Beheim. Vernon Carey at the line shooting. And he missed it. Why am I not surprised? Why am I not surprised? And the first shot, the second shot actually goes. Lovely. Okay. Buddy to Dolajai. Dolajai with a spin move down low. Gets his own miss here and puts it in for two over Vernon Carey. Too easy now for Syracuse. Six points in two min in the first two minutes of the game here in the early going. Oh, God, this stupid orange. These games, the Syracuse games, are always like nail biters. And they're nice feed. Nice feed from Cassius Stanley. Gets it to Matthew Hurt. Both Hurt and Vernon Carey were both in the paint. The assist there from Cassius Stanley to Matthew Hurt and lays in for two. But Syracuse managing to beat our press, and it turns into a brick. So luckily for us, it doesn't seem like they can shoot the three. And that one is no good from the outside. Luckily. Duke now on the offensive side. Trey Jones going to try his own hand at three. That's off back iron. The rebound to Vernon Carey down low. Can't control it. Actually poked out from behind by the Syracuse players. And Syracuse now controls going the other way. This is Hughes working on Matthew Hurt. Hurt gives him the baseline. And Hughes puts up a jump shot. It's a long two. Should be a long two there. Not quite the three. Uh, not bad defense by Hurt, but better offense on the side of Syracuse. Stanley, Vernon Carey still working down really hard down low. A triple team, actually, and Carey draws a blocking foul against Hughes. That's big. I'm trying to get Hughes here. I, did, I was really hoping that at some point this game would turn into an absolute blowout and we could just see Savarino versus Buddy Beheim, like the two of them playing defense against and offense against each other, because that would sort of be that would sort of be interesting. Coach K's grandson, Jim's Beheim's actual kid. Like because, you know, Beheim and K can't actually play basketball anymore against each other, so they might as well have their grandchildren do it. It's kind of how I was thinking about that. Wendell Moore back in the game for the first time in, what, the better part of a month and a half ever since breaking his hand. Uh, Vernon Carey goes one for two at the line yet again. So uh, the free throw shooting hasn't really improved there. Duke trailing eight to four here in the early going. As the double team up top by Gerard both. Both teams willing to bring the double, and the shot no good by Syracuse's Dolajai, who tried to put up a little nice little runner there, baseline. No good there. So far, our young freshman, looks like the crowd there at the Carrier Dome, 
isn't too much to handle, although you always hate these road games. Although January is our bad month. Like, we always have some tragedies in January, and we did, you know, we dropped two games. February, not as bad. We do at, we do better, and that's a foul. Oh, Matthew. <sighs> Dolajai pump fakes Matthew Hurt into the air, and then draws a foul. So Matthew, in the first four minutes, has amassed a grand total of two points. No, Gerard, sorry, draws the foul. A grand total of two points and two fouls. So he will probably go to the bench. And actually, Jack White will come in to replace him. We are wearing the classic Duke uniforms, the ones with the gothic lettering. We wore these a couple weeks ago. can't remember the exact... Uh, that is out of bounds. The missed free throw results in an out of bounds by Gerard. We almost actually gave it right back to him. So I don't like, we haven't been showing really any hustle there. Don't like that at all. Duke got to show a bit more hustle here. Especially on the defensive end. Trey Jones driving into the paint. Trey Jones going to try to score on his own. Yes, the shot is good. Hits every part of the rim, but decides to go down. Our Blue Devils only down by three so far. Let's see what Wendell can give us. This is his first game back, but given the nature of the injury, should be able to do some pretty good rehab, or at least stay in game shape. Oof, that shot by Hughes goes 11-6 now. Blue Devils. Or orange, rather. Trey Jones, Cassius Stanley on the outside. Syracuse using that iconic 2-3 zone. We haven't quite figured out the best way to beat it, although that was an attempted alley-oop to Vernon Carey, which didn't land. Right idea, poorly executed, unfortunately. So keep it at 11-6. Orange here as we have reached the under-16 timeout. The game is on ESPN now. Awesome. So they flipped it over. Good. Because the ESPN news is, like, way behind. Yeah. Okay. So we will flip over there. It looks like, actually, it looks like Auburn is going to take the win against Kentucky. Um, that is pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it's not, it's not yet. Kentucky is still, Kentucky and Auburn are still going, uh, are still going at it here. As we are at the under-16 timeout, I want to just welcome in all the viewers. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Happy February. This is uh, Ritz here for Relive, for the team here at Relive Sports, bringing you the Duke-Syracuse game. I and all the f f all of us here at Relive are huge Duke fans. So this is the... 100% Duke biased version of the broadcast. I don't care what the announcers on actual TV say. We are going to call this game as if Duke is the only team on the floor. And that is totally fine with us. So that is what you're signing up for. And that is why we have plenty of fun with this. As Auburn is going to take the game against Kentucky. Looks like the final score is 75-66 here. Kentucky going down. North Carolina, apparently, according to Justin, went down earlier as well. So that's good. Kansas did win. It was a close game, but Kansas did win against Texas Tech. And we're just doing the final. This should cut back directly to the Duke game. As Auburn was almost about to storm the court. They are they're ranked 17th. Yeah, you beat Kentucky. Congratulations. But, like, yeah. All right, stop interviewing Bruce Pearl. It's okay. We get it. Oh, come on. We don't need the Bruce Pearl interview. All right, fine. It'll have to go on the next go around. <laughs> G50 production rooting for Syracuse here in chat. Welcome in. 
No worries. We can have Syracuse fans and Duke fans. We can have a good chat about the game as it goes on. To be honest, I don't know all your Syracuse players by heart, but I will probably by the time we reach the half times. Here's Gerard working on bringing the ball up the court here, working on Trey Jones. Gerard bringing it up, gives it to Buddy Bayheim, who's working on Cassius Stanley. Bayheim puts up a shot at the baseline. That shot is no good as it just rolls right off the rim softly. Wendell Moore, we haven't see, we want to see how he's doing coming off this injury. We thought about another lob here. Jack White's really trying to flatten the zone, and Wendell Moore drives in there and gets fouled. Foul going to go on Buddy Bayheim, I believe. Yeah, so for those... I don't even know a single player. <laughs> That's okay. Well, we'll just we'll learn the names as we go in that case. Um, so in, on that possession, if we see a replay of that possession, you'll see a chat that Jack White was actually positioned closer to the baseline. It's one of the ways to try to beat the 2-3 zone here is actually what we call try to flatten the zone, where you try to put somebody behind it. So if you can... And, and we have two post players, right? So you can have Vernon Carey kind of playing in the middle of the paint, which is trying to draw that back line, that three-man back line of the zone up. And then Jack White's going to try to sneak in behind. And what you're trying to do there is Trey Jones attempted, but didn't actually pull the trigger on the alley-oop. They were trying to get the alley-oop there to Jack White. We'll see if they can hit that play later in the game, but that's what they're trying to to do in that scenario. And why, again here, Jack White was way deep in, and then this is Wendell Moore, Jack White calling for it. Now he gets pinned down in the baseline right now out on the outside there to Trey Jones. Wendell is going to drive in and try to, oh, he travels actually. That's unfortunate. He's trying to get it down low, but you saw again, Jack White pushing all the way to the baseline there. We have our buddies saying it's a typical start for Syracuse here. Yeah, this is pretty. I'm watching multiple chats at the same time. Four Duke turnovers. There's the typical start against Syracuse. The backdoor cut. Oh, Duke once again getting beat on the backdoor cut. At this point, we can put a montage together of times that Duke has gotten beat on backdoor cuts this season. Offensive foul called against Vernon Carey. Oh, boy. Or Jack White, one of the two. That's painful. Now, I thought they got Vernon Carey. The announcers are confused, but I'm pretty sure that it was on Vernon Carey. So I have no idea who's calling this game, but they're totally lost. Gerard gives this one to Buddy. Buddy on the outside. Buddy finds an open uh, Hughes. Sabidi finds an open Sabidi down low, and Sabidi gets it. No, the foul is waved off. The shot is waved off, so the the shot is no good. Javin Delorier now in the game here. Javin working down low on Sabidi. Window more. Oh, nice find in Trey Jones down low, but he can't finish. Trey Jones was right at the ACC, and Javin is now on the floor trying to go for it. I love to see the effort there by Javin. And so the, okay, so the other way to beat the to beat the zone, as it'll be Syracuse ball here in a second, the other way to beat the zone is to put a man right at the ACC logo, and Duke has been able to do this a couple times in the past in the past years. So remember when we had players like uh, Rodney Hood, who could shoot that mid-range shot really well, and of course what they're trying to do here is Trey Jones, the mid, that mid-range shot is sort of his bread and butter, right? It's a pure stroke. That's what he likes to take. He probably hits it at a better clip than he hits the three, to be honest. And the foul being called against Delorier as Dolajai tries to drive right side. And so uh, the intent there is to try to get Trey Jones to right in the middle of the zone and take those mid-range jump shots and try to bust the zone from there. And then the third option is to try to shoot the three, which we are doing at a better clip this year but haven't done so well historically in the past couple of years. So we'll see which strategy Duke decides to go with. And here's Dolajai. Dolajai, the slip, Sabidi with a slip who gets Javin in the air, and Javin's going to pick up his second foul probably in almost as many seconds. That's, on, that's not good. That's not good. 
Sidibe. Sidibe. God, Javin, what the hell? <laughs> that was a quick one minute of playtime. Are you kidding me? Ay, ay, ay. And, okay, he only hits one of the two free throws. So it's only, despite the fact that we've played so bad, it's only a six-point game so far. It feels like it should be more. Syracuse really hasn't been able to capitalize all that much, though. Alex O'Connor now in the game. Great find down low to Javin, who finishes with a flush. Javin just has these moments. And so does uh, O'Connell. Just has these moments. Four-point margin now for these two. Dolajai still working on Javin. Javin better not pick up that third foul. That's going to not end well. Gerard tries for three. No. Dolajai skies in there. Nobody boxes him out, and he just lays it in for two. Syracuse 16, Duke 10. Try, uh, Trey calling for a screen here up high, but doesn't decides not to go through with it. And Trey now 14 seconds on the shot clock. Still plenty of time. Find the offense. O'Connell with a turnover. No. Picked up back by Goldwire. Vernon Carey now gets it. Vernon Carey off the glass. Can't get it to go. Rebound out of Javin. That did hit the rim. So 20 second reset on the shot clock. AOC going to drive in. AOC with the right hand. No. Vernon Carey with the rebound. Yes. Actually, it's just a foul. <laughs> Oh, it's a foul, and we've hit the under-12 timeout as Duke is still playing poorly. And yes, that's not what we wanted at all, actually, as Duke's still playing poorly here down by six and hitting the under-12 timeout. So we have a moment. Just wanted to say welcome in, everybody. Good evening to those out on the West Coast, or on the East Coast and the West Coast, actually. We're out here on the West Coast, so it's only about 5.30 for us. Game got off to a bit of a late start, about 8.10 East Coast time, local time over there in Syracuse. Duke not playing so good at the start, as our buddy Justin said. It's a typical typical Duke start at Syracuse. I uh, don't see much zone very often, so that's kind of why it's sort of tricky for teams to play against it. Although you would think, given the relationship between Coach K and Jim Beheim, that Coach K basically knows the zone like, you know, the back of his hand, so to speak, or he should at least. And um, But it's like, you don't really practice against it. If you don't play, you don't really practice against it because no, most of those teams aren't going, to, aren't going to play it against you, so there's no point in practicing against it, right? So uh, Duke coming off the win against Pittsburgh in Cameron on Tuesday earlier in the week. Last week, we had the weekend off, and this week, we're now up here at Syracuse. We will have a game against Boston College on Tuesday, and then be back here next Saturday for the big one, Duke UNC from Chapel Hill. UNC falling today to BC, uh, which is always a good thing. We'll check out those highlights when we hit the halftime, because we always like it when watching Carolina lose, because what's not to like about about that basically yeah so let's check the stats real quick here do a quick stats check and keep us all up to date Vernon Carey leading the charge nope that's in rebounds actually uh, no Duke player has more than two points so really Wait, really? <laughs> yeah, okay, that's wild. Javin's got two, Wendell's got two, Trey Jones has two, Matthew Hurt has two, although uh, Matthew Hurt is now on the bench with two fouls after picking up a quick two in basically three minutes. So he's on the, he's been on the bench and probably will be on the bench for the majority of the first half. And Vernon Carey's got two. Jordan Goldby and Cassius Stanley did start the game but have not scored yet. Oh, Doug Sherman and Corey Alexander calling this game. 
they did not bring the A-team to Syracuse. A-team went to <laughs> Auburn and Kentucky with uh, over there. Going to start off here with Vernon Carey at the line. They're showing off some largest basketball crowds. It doesn't look like we're breaking records tonight. And Vernon Carey gets the first of two to go. And Vernon Carey now shooting the second. Yes, Vernon Carey's got got both of a trip with two free throws. It's a miracle, guys and gals. It's a freaking miracle. Vernon Carey now four of six from the free throw line. As O'Connell's looking to get some extended minutes with the early foul trouble here by the Blue Devils. We have not yet seen Joey Baker in the game. Jordan Goldwire now back in the game working on Buddy Bayheim, And here is Hughes on O'Connell. This boy, this is a bit of a mis height mismatch here. And Hughes, Hughes should have walked, walked with that one. But uh, puts up a shot and it doesn't even hit the rim. So it's called that a attempted rebound there. O'Connell is going to try to put up a three. Can't get that one to go. Rebound almost picked up by Delorier. And refs not sure which direction the ball is going, although they will give it back to Syracuse. I think I suppose they're just going with the home team on that one. <clears throat> O'Connell had a good look at it from three. O'Connell hasn't been seeing as many minutes lately. Ooh, ooh. Trey Jones almost being able to poke the ball out of Washington's hands. Nope, Dolajai going to inbound it. Dolajai does get it into Hughes, and now it's Goldwire on Hughes. A little bit of a height mismatch here as well, but, uh, you know, definitely one of our better defenders. The switch puts Goldwire on to Bayheim, and Bayheim going to look for three. Bayheim, that's back iron. That's too strong. Re rebound to the Hughes. Yes, rebound down low, and that is Gourier. Gourier? And he can't finish. Yeah, Gouria Quincy can't finish down low. And here's the attempted alley-oop, but poked out of bounds by Dolajai. <clears throat> Come on, guys. Duke's got to really pick this up. I mean, this is a low-scoring I mean, low game. It's like 12-16 with like 10 minutes in. Should be like... We're used to putting up like 40-point halves. Like, this is not even close. And a nice feed down low to Vernon Carey off the baseline out of bounds play. Beautifully done. And that puts us within two points here. 14-16 now, Blue Devils. This is Quincy. Quincy. Oh, great defense by Delorier. Javin player playing good defense there. Staying straight up. Staying vertical. A little replay of the cut inside. Vernon Carey is going to lay it in nice and easy. Buddy Beheim trying for three again. Oh, geez. Hits that one from the... So Syracuse running its own baseline out of bounds there pretty well. Able to hit. And of trying Wendell Moore trying to feed it down to Javin. Javin playing with two fouls. He's calmed down a little bit. He's calmed down a little bit. Not playing. Hasn't, uh, hasn't picked up a third one. There's a little promo for UNC at Florida State. Boy, that's probably going to be another UNC loss. Cassius Stanley tries to pass it out to Trey Jones, who was in the left corner and open, but kicked ball. It's actually going to give it back to the Blue Devils. 20 seconds on the shot clock, 9.49 to go here. I still, we still have yet to see Duke actually try, like, actually say they have figured out this zone. Hurt actually back in the game here. He's got two fouls as well. So it's Wendell, Stanley, Trey, Hurt, and Carey in the game. Seven seconds on this shot clock here. Trey Jones now gets the ACC. He's going to try to put out that mid-range shot. Falls just short. Oh, man, if Trey can get that shot to go, that would be huge for us. And here's Hughes from the outside. That looks like a long two, but the rebound goes to Vernon Carey. And Trey Jones. Oh, Trey Jones to Syracuse. To, oh, man, stripped. Yeah, foul. It's a good foul. So this is going to be a foul. foul uh, Vernon Carey fouls Elijah Hughes there on the transition breakaway. I say make him earn it. 
So I am okay with that foul, even though I believe that is the second personal on carry. Or it's actually the first. Uh, you know, they call it it's a personal foul on carry, but he's got to Hughes has now got to earn it at the line. So I am totally okay with that. Vernon Carey going, yeah, it is his second foul. Now, of course, if Hughes manages to hit both free throws, which, yeah, which he does. So there we go. <laughs> Nine minutes on the clock here. Duke trailing by seven. In what has sort of been a, what we've come to know as typical Duke-Syracuse games, where Duke doesn't really show up in the first half and seems lost, especially with the freshmen. Matthew Hurt catches Stanley driving baseline. Stanley gets the runner to go. Nice. We're going to need his production tonight for sure. 16-21. Dolajai working on Matthew Hurt. Matthew Hurt's got to be careful. He's got the two fouls. It's a turnover by Syracuse going right to Wendell Moore. And Wendell Moore going to take this one. Wendell going to take this. Wendell to Trey. Trey in the corner. Trey! Nice shot, Trey. Nice shot by Trey Jones there in the corners. Now it's a two-point game with eight minutes to go. The next whistle will take us to the under-eight timeout. As here's Buddy Bayheim tries again for three. No, can't get it to go. Javin down with the rebound. Great rebound in and amongst two Syracuse players there. Matthew Hurt. Matthew! No, Matthew. Now Matthew tries. Matthew doesn't make it on that one. And do Duke with the rebound? No. Yes. It ends up in the hands of Trey Jones. Trey Jones is going to – it's a block against Joel Ajay, and it should have been continuation. That drives me – drives me absolutely insane. <laughs> it's a great find here by Wendell Moore, finding Trey Jones in the corner who just manages to knock it down. Trey Jones is going to head to the free throw line once we come back out of the commercial break. And we're going to roll the ads. No, just kidding. We don't have ads here. We just talk Duke all the time. So you don't have to see the crazy stuff that ESPN puts on TV anymore. Because, yeah, that's the advantage. In any case... Give us a shout. Let us know what you're thinking about the game, how Duke is playing so far, what you're liking, what you're seeing. Let me just check what the other folks are saying. Oh, jeez. Duke starting to pick it up here. Five on a little five quick points for our Blue Devils. Off a Cash Stanley two point shot, and then a Trey Jones three pointer coming off a in transition off of a Syracuse. Off of a Syracuse turnover. Uh, these stats here are not helping me at all. Where are the turnovers? Yeah, still five turnovers for Duke so far. Most of them in the early going have not turned the ball over late. And really the Duke turnovers haven't re directly resulted in Syracuse points. So not the worst thing in the world. It could be could be worse. Could have been worse, chat. It could have been worse. Yeah, like we could have, like there was something we were saying, uh, what some folks were saying in chat too. Like the way we started this game, <laughs> like we could have been down 10 plus easily. Uh, but Syracuse just not really capitalizing. Next foul does put Duke, or just put Syracuse in the bonus rather. We've got six of them currently. Uh, are shooting from the field, shooting only three of nine, managing to make up four of six from the free throw line. Syracuse even with us there as well. Actually, I don't think this is updated because we absolutely have... To, okay, we're doing a little bit better now. Five, uh, Six of 15, sorry. Six of 15 shooting so far for the Blue Devils. One of five from the outside. One of six for Syracuse as well. Most of those three-pointers being taken by Buddy Beheim, who just hasn't been... hasn't managed to to put get one to go which is great for us because as soon as he does you don't want to let shooters like that see the ball go through the hoop Syracuse however has led the entirety of the game basically
they're just showing the uh, the pregame ceremonies and eight second moment of silence. And back in the action now, Duke inbounding here. Ball in the hands of Wendell Moore. Cashes Stanley trying to get this down to Javin. Javin's got great position down low and does finish. It's a tie game. Duke finally sort of figuring it out the zone here. Javin had great position down low. And here is Buddy Bayheim. Great defense there by Cassius Stanley, making himself look tall. Elijah Hughes from the outside. Hughes for three. That's front iron. The rebound to Quincy. And Quincy puts it. Oh, jeez. Manages to get the second chance opportunity. He was too low down there in the paint. Too low in the paint. He had good position, and he just finished that one. So, and... Matthew Hurt now working down low. The little turnaround, right-handed hook shot. Yes, for Matthew. Both teams exchange an offense here. Duke playing with a lot more pace, though. The offense looks like it works a lot better here. It looks like the first, like the first four minutes were atrocious. Now this is getting, this is looking a lot better here for our Blue Devils. The shot from outside from Buddy Bayheim still can't buy a shot here. Rebound. No, it's a foul against Javin. That's his third. So that is going to be it for Javin for this half. That is going to be it for Javin for the half, unfortunately. And Quincy manages to hit the first of two. Quincy... Gouyer. They, where's the pronunciation guide for that one? Gourier. Ah, I had it right. It is. It's like French. We can do that. All right. Duke now trailing by two after the made free throws by Gourier. You got both uh, White and Hurt trying to work in the paint with the three guards with Wendell, rather, Trey and Cassius Stanley on the outside. And Stanley called for an offensive foul, which was a lot of acting. What? What? That was an acting job. What was that? Yeah, Coach K also saying how. That's a bad call for the lip readers in the audience. That's exactly what Coach K says. That's <laughs> a bad call. I didn't actually see there was no foul language in that one. Coach kept it clean. That was an atrocious call by the ref here underneath. Oh, man. It's an and one. Oh, God. What? What? Wow. It's a nice find. Gerard down low. The interior passing is basically as he was going out of bounds. Finds Scurrier. And is going to go to the line to try to complete the and one play. The and one does complete. So that's a little five point run by the Syracuse Orange. All Quincy Gourier here at the free throw line. And then the three points the old fashioned way. Alex O'Connell now back in on the floor as... Vernon Carey is also on the floor, so Hurt and Stanley now have gone to the bench. We really need O'Connell's sh uh, shooting. Here's Wendell Moore trying for three. Wendell! That's right. Yes! Wendell Moore, welcome back to the squad, buddy. And that was an unfortunate two-pointer, so Gerard hits for two, so it's a four-point margin. Four-point margin here. O'Connell working. Jack White is working so hard. We just can't get him the ball. Oh, Vernon Carey finishes amongst four oranges. What a big, what a man. Just, just stronger than everyone. 
Yeah, first time back for uh, Wendell in about a month. Here's Dolezal working in low. Somebody go guard him. Wait, <laughs> they just gave him the paint. <laughs> Jack White put a hand up. It was like way too late. Wow. Okay, Duke on the miscommunication there. Hughes goes flying, so he's out of the play for right now. Vernon Carey can't finish, but the rebound goes to Syracuse. Oh, dear. All right, four-point game so far. And Gerard is going to put one up from way downtown. That shot didn't even hit the rim. Wow, that's a terrible shot. Not that I mind. <laughs> that was like, that was bad. Syracuse shooting one for nine from three, thankfully. As Duke still finds itself down here in the first half. And we just gave it away again. It's a it's a held ball. Possession arrow is going to keep it here with Duke. It's a four-point game. Almost gave it away again. Oh, Wendell trying to pass it to Alex O'Connell in the corner. I mean, there's just no space. You can't actually... O'Connell's going to come back to the ball in that case because he just waits there. It's going to get intercepted. It's going to get picked off. We haven't seen Joey Baker yet. I don't know if he's in the doghouse or anything, but he is suited up and ready to play. Duke with the baseline out of bounds again. We saw them score off a similar play earlier, and they're just going to... Damn it. Oh, well, so we got lucky there because the ball went back in the went in the backcourt off of Matthew Hurt, and then Gerard touched it. It would have been a backcourt violation if we had repossessed the ball there in the backcourt because the tip didn't come until the ball actually went out of bounds. Man, get it together, people. Alex O'Connell drive for three, and that is sent into the stands. Hughes with a block. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Wow. He's trying to shoot over Hughes. All right. We've hit the under four timeout. 3.55 on the clock to go. Oh, man. That was almost like what Zion Williamson used to do to people last year. Poor Alex. It's, it's, been, it's been rough for Alex. I feel bad. I feel bad for O'Connell. Oh, all right. So Duke by four. Yes. Chet saying we are sloppy. We haven't made free throws. We've actually only missed two free throws. It seems like we haven't made free throws, but uh, I believe if I double check the stats here real quick, it will show Wendell made both of his and Carrie has missed two. So we'll have to check the official free throws it is it is six of eight which is 75 percent which currently means we are shooting better than our season average which is somewhere about 69 70 so that part's good that's actually a positive uh we, just, we aren't the ones we're not making are three point shots there two of seven shooting under 30 percent we are a better team than that remember when we did when we did the stats let me just pull them up when we did the stats a couple of weeks ago on our percentages, and I don't have... It was a couple of games ago. I don't have exactly an update. Let me see if I can find it. Unless Justin's in chat. Maybe Justin has a live stats update for us. Um, where did we do that? That was against Miami? Crap. I'm like never going to find it. Louisville? No. Oh, yeah, it was. It was the Louisville game. There. This was our, this was our, so our free throw percentage through 17 games was 68%. Uh, and uh, we were shooting 38% from three. So we're actually shooting better free throws tonight. And we are shooting about 10% worse. So we probably should have gone like three of eight would have put us kind of right at our season 49 percent from the floor we're only at we're at like 48 at the moment so that is actually so that part's actually just like right on target um we have seen Wendell Moore back in the game Wendell managing to hit a three-point shot nice shot from him and then a good assist earlier although the one the attempted pass to O'Connell was a bit ill-advised and I definitely yeah, didn't like that at all um 
Other things, other stats that have stood out to me so far, we've doubled up on the turnovers. Eight Duke turnovers to only four turnovers for Syracuse. Ouch, that's not good. And Syracuse has led the entire way here. As we are almost ready to pick this thing back up, coming in from the under four timeout, we're going to check out the uh, do, the UNC highlights at halftime. We'll also go sort of around the league to see what's up with some of the other teams. Kentucky losing earlier today. And Duke now inbounding here. 3.55 to go as Duke inbounds the ball. Eight seconds on the shot clock here. And Wendell... Wendell, four seconds. Wendell, make it happen, Wendell. Wendell puts this one up. It's a tough shot. Rebound to Vernon Carey. Vernon Carey! Nicely done. Get with the putback. Shot clock did reset because Wendell's shot did hit the rim. So two-point margin here. Remember, what we talk about a lot of the times is teams that, like, to win the games, you got to win the first and last four minutes of the half. And what a block by Matthew Hurt on Dolajai. And now on the run out, Duke going in. Trey Jones. Oh, it's rejected by Hughes. Again! Oh, ow. That was painful. And Syracuse for three. Oh, halfway down! <laughs> not, I'm not apologizing. Great. Sucks to be Syracuse. <laughs> halfway down on that one. Alex O'Connell driving baseline. Not going to find it. A step back jumper! What a beautiful shot by O'Connell! Wow. Ties the game here. What a beautiful shot by O'Connell. We have not seen – we need to. We need a good game out of him. You know, 10 points tonight from O'Connell, even eight, or give me six. <laughs> Just, like, keep going down. As Duke gets beat again on the backdoor cut is a feed by Syracuse. Wow, base – dude's just sitting there on the baseline. Ball moves faster than the man. Just give me six points out of O'Connell tonight, and I will feel good about this game. Wendell, get it back to Trey Jones. Now O'Connell thinking about it again. O'Connell driving in. It's to Trey Jones. O'Connell almost walked there. Trey sends it high to Vernon Carey, who basically stiffs arms his man into the floor, and nothing gets called, which is fine, which is totally okay, because there's no foul there. I didn't see one. And neither, apparently neither did the ref, so we're on the same page. 34-34 all, under two minutes to go. Almost there. O'Connell almost stole it. Oh, Buddy Bayheim should have been called for a travel as he slid, and Buddy Bayheim finally gets a shot to go. It's basically been cold the entire game. 36 to 36. Dolajai gets called for a foul as he holds Vernon Carey. Yes, absolutely. What are you complaining about, dude? If somebody had done that to you, you would have been like, hey, where's my foul? It's absolutely a foul. Vernon Carey got position, got on the inside hip. It's very easy from that point. With Dolajai on the outside hip and Carey on the inside, it's like, like that. Carey can just, once he gets the ball, Carey just turns around, flips, and he's at the basket. The only way to stop that is by holding him, which is exactly what Dolajai did. A good call. Finally, the ref made a right call. Baseline out of bounds once again, and this time we actually managed to inbound it properly. Ref blows the whistle because apparently the shot clock doesn't didn't start. So Trey's gonna inbound this from right next to Jimmy B. Carry on himself a good game, twelve points, four of six from the floor. Trey Jones, Wendell Moore. O'Connell and the ESPN stream seems to have stopped buffering there for a second or started buffering there for a second. And looks like Javin manages a nice lay in there. So 36, 36. Record. Ah, I actually can't even get this thing to work for me. Why is it uh, not working? All right, we are back. So under a minute to go, and it is a tie game. Alex O'Connell, Buddy Bayheim finds Gerard on the outside. Gerard's shot hits the back of the backboard, 
and Quincy fouls O'Connell, who comes down with the rebound. Joe, I would, I would love to record the TV screen. It's actually not on the TV. It's on my computer, but that would be illegal. So, yeah. We are trying to stray, straddle this gray area where we actually don't don't actually get into real trouble with ESPN. <laughs> O'Connell hits the first free throw. And O'Connell manages to hit the second one. So O'Connell, we're getting points production out of him. Actually, O'Connell has surprisingly really good games against Syracuse. I'll have to go back into the archives. But I'm pretty sure O'Connell has put up some, like, big games against the Cuse in the past. A nice block there by, uh, by Jack White down low. It's 30 seconds on the clock, and Javin finds Javin! Nice feed underneath. So a block... Into a two-point basket by Javin. Finds the Blue Devils up by four here with 21 seconds. And Jimmy B is going to call a timeout here to try to draw up the final play of the first half. Duke struggling through most of the first half. And finally, finally seeming to figure it out here. Back after the 30-second timeout, 21 seconds on the clock. Duke leading 40-36 to 36 in a game where Syracuse has basically led the entire way until the last minute. Oh, yeah, oddity, because if you're looking at the Duke bench and you're wondering where Nolan Smith and John Shire are, we'll get to that at halftime because they're not there. It's a 12-4 Duke run the last 40 and a half, four minutes and 30 seconds. Here's Gerard driving in six seconds. Gerard puts up the mid-range shot. No good. Rebound down to the Blue Devils. No, rebound down to Hughes. Actually, it's a hell ball. That should be a hell ball. It's going to give it back to the Syracuse Orange. And with two seconds on the game clock to go, shot clock doesn't matter at this point. We just got to make sure they don't convert this. I don't want Syracuse to have any momentum going to the locker room. Two seconds. The three is good if it goes, and it does not. Syracuse did get the shot off. Buddy Beheim did get the shot off, but Syracuse has, has only managed to hit one three-pointer in the entire half, basically going one for 10 so far. And that is going to be your halftime. Duke ending the half on a 12 to four run. And that is exceptionally well done here by the Blue Devils. Because it was not looking good there for a while. And as we said, uh, right as we said, coming right out of the under four timeout, the, uh, the way that we end the first, the last and f the last four minutes of the first and the first four minutes of the second is going to determine whether we win this game or not. And so we had a great last four of the first. Now we're going to need to come out with a great first four of the second. I think Duke has sort of finally figured this one out. And let's now check in on, as we are at the halftime, we're going to check in on UNC's loss to Boston College. Because that's fun. And I'm going to turn that on. There we go. So we will turn that on. And I actually can't even find the UNC scores because they are not ranked. So they're not here. Okay, so <laughs> we're going to have to dig for this one. Uh, where is it? UNC. UNC. Oh, full scoreboard. Wow, we got to go two layers deep here to find... The Carolina highlights. And by that, I mean the Florida State 
the Boston College highlights. No, no, no. Still can't find it. Okay. Three clicks in. Still can't find it. There it is! Ah, perfect. Let's enjoy. Wait, no, that's not that's not what we want. I want the full highlights here. Uh, Carolina. Versus BC. Oh, there's condensed game. There we go. This should work. Oh, man, this was at Carolina. Oh, boy. Really? Ow, that's going to hurt. So Cole Anthony was back in the game. He's been out for the better part of the last, what, like two months or something crazy like that? Looks like this game is close the entire way. You can tell Carolina doesn't even have, like, the camera is, like, dark. They definitely don't even have the, uh, like, the, they're not even bothering sending the uh, the real crew down anymore. <laughs> Ooh, Boston College here leading late in the game. What a reverse lay-in. Wow, that was impressive. All right, that was a terrible highlight cut. These guys fail. <laughs> hey, Monty Cheese, how you doing? <laughs> Good afternoon, Monty. Oh, the turnover! Just give it to him! Throw it down, buddy! Yes! Woo! Oh, I love that. Six-point margin, make it... Oh, eight! No rebound there. UNC getting beat on the boards, too. And this is like... Boston College four and six, Carolina three and six. It's not like a total mismatch here. These two teams are like quote unquote even, <laughs> even as Boston College leading here by tw by ten points. Cole Anthony, ooh, Cole Anthony gets one to go. Yeah, okay, we don't need to see it's like three replays of this thing. Whatever, just go, go. All right. Oh, and now Carolina leading with two minutes to go. Well, that gets makes things interesting. That puts Boston College back up one. Actually, that makes things even more painful for UNC. With here, so now they're down one with 35 seconds to go. 17 on the shot clock. Cole Anthony. Ooh, Cole Anthony. I mean, he is basically the entire team. Like they were like they hit the really hit the skids when he got injured and like went out, and that's why they're like ten and ten at the moment. Actually, ten and eleven at the moment after the like, yeah, after Cole Anthony went down, like this thing, like the the wheels fell off. Here, the last second shot. Oh, that is a tough shot, and it's an air ball. <laughs> wow. Carolina going down at home. Ooh, ends a 12-game losing streak. Wow. So, not only... Well, Monty, welcome to your first YouTube stream. It's a little odd. Like, honestly, the YouTube streams are a little weird. It's a bit different than being on Twitch. Uh, mainly because I just, like, don't really know what, like... Can we just, can we use emotes? Like, <laughs> I feel like some of the social functions aren't as well developed on the YouTube as they are on the Twitch side of things. Wow. Cole Anthony doesn't get it to go there at the end. Boy, he would have been a hero for Carolina if he had gotten that one. So now they're 10 and 11. So now they have... They've given – so Boston College breaks a 12-game losing streak to UNC, and Clemson also breaks its 59-game losing streak in Carolina this year. So it's been a great year for everybody who's been losing to UNC in the past. Like, 
if you've been losing to UNC, this is your year. Like, go get it. And, like, teams are hungry for that. Oh, as Louisville just puts the hurt on here on NC State. Florida State takes care of business at Virginia Tech. Notre Dame, kind of an odd team. Kind of sitting there at four and six. But you just know that whenever we play Notre Dame, they're going to show up and, like, some dude's going to go off for freaking 30. Because that's just how it happens. That's just how it happens. Oh, yeah, yeah. And let's see, what other So there are a couple other games. Gonzaga, the game against the Gonzaga game was actually close. Let's check, go around the top 25 here. Or if you have a particular team that you want to check out highlights for, just put that in chat and we'll see if we can find it here. As we're still at the halftime. Actually, they are showing highlights of this Kansas and Texas Tech game. We can show these ones. So these are just highlights here. This game actually got really close here at the end. I was watching this one earlier. Texas Tech, a Final Four team from last year. Still a danger here in the Big 12. Kansas, is it 6-1 though? I mean, they always seem to just... Eight, sitting at 18-3. and three, they're, One of their losses, of course, coming to at the hands of us earlier in the year. And there is... Uh, Baylor, number one team in the country, who leapfrogged Gonzaga, sitting there at 8-0. and Baylor and Kansas will have to play. They are in the same conference, so they will have to play each other at some point in the season. I don't actually know when that game is. Let's check. Actually, actually that would be pretty... That would be good to find. Let's check it out. It's like Michigan State. Oh, no, Michigan State got upset Ooh, by Wisconsin by a point there, too. Let's see. Baylor Bears. Man, I need to watch a Baylor game. They've just been dominant. They lost to University of Washington. They lost to UW earlier in the... Oh, my gosh. A local Seattle there earlier in the year. That's their only loss. That's incredible. They were at home to Oh, this must have been a this must have been a neutral site game. Wow, they only play Kansas what? Oh, oh, they've no, they've already beaten Kansas. Never mind. Yeah, they're good. They've already beaten Kansas 60s. Oh, in Kansas too. Okay, so that's Kansas's one loss in the Big 12. It's to Baylor. Ah, I got it. Okay. And then they will host them again on the 22nd. Got it. Got it. Yeah, Gonzaga is currently number two in the country. And their game, we can check their game from earlier, was actually pretty close. Where is their game from earlier? Scores. Uh, don't worry, I am. we will make sure that we don't miss a second of the game here. Yeah, Gonzaga managing to pull away here this uh, to win. Gonzaga managing to win by four against San Francisco. Oh, that was the game. I was at the gym for this one earlier, and they like were just showing a random game. I was like, why are they showing that one? And I was like, ah, because they... Oh, wow, this is hilarious. I didn't see this tweet over here. Boston College with a gutsy and great road win at UNC. Derek Thornton leads BC with 15 points. <laughs> the former Duke guard. Oh, my gosh. The former Duke guard hangs one up on Carolina. No wonder. That is really funny. It just gets better. It just gets better. I know Justin's been cheering for um, Carolina to lose as well. Okay, so let's... So we wanted... To, the other thing we were uh, curious about was AOC's stats. Because if I recall correctly, he has had big games in his career against Syracuse. So, oh, damn, we lost to Air Force in lacrosse? Damn it. 
That's not good. That would be a fun one to cast. Although, I, honestly, I don't know as much lacrosse as I probably should. We we watched a ton of it while we were there in school, but it'd be hard to call. Uh, all right, so going back into the history books. Syracuse. Syracuse. Okay. So, box score. So, that was a loss to Syracuse. And then this was a win on the opposite side. This now we're looking we're looking at stats from last year because I'm pretty sure Zion O'Connell. Okay, yeah, O'Connell, 16 points. Actually, the third leading scorer behind Zion who put up 35. Well, okay, and RJ, so 26. So O'Connell with 16 there, and O'Connell with 20 in the game in the game at home. Only trailing by uh, trailing uh, R.J. Barrett. Zion was actually injured for this game last year. That's why he's not on the box score. So we can see. So clearly between the last two games last year, there's just something about Orange and O'Connell likes it. And I guess he's just a fa he's just a fan of orange juice. I don't know. I mean, like it could be. It could be. No pulp, of course. Because no pulp is better than orange juice with pulp. But, like, that is a whole chat discussion that I'm sure is going to, like, people are going to jump on that one. But my vote is for no pulp. And let's try some of the other games from the other years, too. So, last year he put he hung 16 and 20 on the orange. And year before that... Oh, year before that, he hung zero. Okay, so let's like we're we're gonna throw that one out. That was we only had one. Uh, we had another win against Syracuse. Tigers battle. Oh, he had zero there too. Okay, so that's not good. Uh, so that season was not so good. We'll throw we'll throw away that season. Just kidding. Uh, Syracuse. This is Jason Tatum. So this is while we were. This is when I was still in school, and AOC not in the. Okay, not part of the team yet. Okay, so yeah, so we were. So our hunch, our hunch was right at half. Uh, about at some point during the game, we were like, oh, like O'Connell is. He's actually he's like actually playing pretty well, and. He's played well against Syracuse in the past, so actually this is no surprise why he's getting minutes. We haven't seen Joey Baker in the game yet, which is sort of interesting. They're going because we've also had chat discussions before about, you know, like, who do you trust more? Do you trust Joey Baker? Do you trust AOC? And actually, like, it's a really hard one. It's a really hard one to figure to, like, determine because... I, on the one hand, Joey can just go off. It seems to like go off and have these spectacular games. And then O'Connell, for the longest time, was actually pretty consistent, like getting you six to eight points a night. And he's kind of been in a little bit of a. He's been a little bit of a. It's been a little bit of a struggle. Like let's call it what it is. It's been a little bit of a struggle for Alex. But getting it going here tonight for sure, as we are almost ready to get back here at the start of the second half. Let me just double check. We'll keep an eye on on the points across the board. But Vernon Carey leading the team here with 12. And O'Connell with 4 currently. So let's see if he gets back into it. Deloria, Deloria with 8. And this water needs to last me the entire half because I don't have any more. So that's it. All right. Good enough. So let's get ready to rock and roll here. A little behind. ESPN's stream here is a little behind. Let's see if I can try to get it. They have some of like the worst streaming technology. It's really bad. Get these pen a camel back. Actually, that is a great idea. I have never thought about <laughs> Monty Cheese with a camel back suggestion. I've never thought about wearing a camel back during a streamcast. But it's not it's not crazy. 
We may actually one day, we may try it. In any case, welcome back, everybody. At the start of the second half, Duke leading 40-36 to 36 at the Carrier Dome. And Matthew Hurt trying to get things started off with a three from the right side. That does not go. Unfortunately for us, so rebound down to Gerard, and Gerard's going to try to drive this one into Jolajai. Dolajai going to put it up, and it is good. Syracuse cutting the lead here in half in the early going in the first 30 seconds. Wanted just to welcome back in all our viewers. Good evening to all those on the West Coast. It's Cassius Stanley! Stanley nails it from three-point range. Hurt couldn't do it, but Stanley drills one. Nicely done by Stanley. And of course, here, Syracuse on the other end still can't buy a three. Luckily for us, their three-point shooting has just been atrocious all night. They haven't hit their, oh, this Gerard 0 for 4. And Buddy Beheim hasn't really fared any better. Syracuse just hitting one single three-point. Stanley going to try again from three. That is too long. But the putback by Carey. The rebound just lands right in the hands of Vernon Carey. And the putback is good. Nicely done. 14 points tonight for Vernon Carey. Looking good. Nine rebounds on well on his way to a double-double. He's going to get it, no doubt. Here And, of course, that is going to be the announcer's curse, but that's all right. He's definitely going to get it. Dolajai comes up too long here and picks up a foul to add insult to injury. Dolajai with a foul against Matthew Hurt. Duke will just take the ball out from underneath its basket. This is a nice play here. Vernon Carey boxes, his man, boxes out Hughes. He's just bigger. In every sense of the word, alley -oop for yes, Vernon Carey! Oh, and he gets called for a technical! What? Wait, what? Is that real? What do you call for? Ref! Wait a sec. Look at that. There's no way. And he gets. <laughs> where, where does that come from? What a horrible call. Are you kidding? Oh my goodness, and the, the announcers are trying to justify it as taunting, and this silly NCAA... No! No! Mm. That is a horrible call, and that is basically an air ball by Syracuse. The baseball pass by Vernon Carey to catch the Stanley, who does pick it up, and just hangs in the air and lays it in! Oh, that take that, Syracuse. There's your taunting foul. I'm going to taunt them after that play. That was spectacular. Holy cow, a 9-1 run here by the Blue Devils to open up the half. And we are just, and that's a, that's a foul, that's a foul. Jimmy Beheim tries to pass outside after he gets caught on the baseline and Cassius Stanley picks it up and then Beheim fouls. Syracuse just sort of losing, losing their grip here for a second. Okay, this taunting call is total BS. There is no, that is, that was horrible. He's not even, he didn't even taunt the player. He just like shouted at the cheerleaders for God's sake. Like, okay. All right, we're going to move on because we're up now by 10. As Duke 49-39. And another Duke turnover here, nine. Actually, we actually fixed the turnover problem. And as a result, they were able to extend a lead Jordan Goldwire with active hands forces Jimmy uh, forces Beheim to lose the ball, but it is called out on Duke. And now Gerard. Oh, Trey Jones just dogging Gerard in the backcourt. Syracuse going in the wrong direction here. There were 12 seconds on the shot clock when they inbounded it, and they basically picked it up in the backcourt. Now they're basically picking it up from their own end line. 
As with nine seconds to go, they're going to have to go the whole length of the court here. Here's Dolajai now dr driving in. Dolajai is actually going to finish. All right, never mind. So I jinxed it. Dolajai will finish. And make it an eight-point game. Gold wired. Matthew Hurt on the outside. Syracuse brings the double team. Goal wire, uh, rather, Hurt does get it outside. And here's Cassius Stanley. Had an opportunity for three, and it's a travel. Ugh, another Duke turnover here. Duke managing to extend its lead when it's taking care of the basketball. Oh, Dolajai, just no defense. Dolajai just goes right in. Finishes. Easy layup. Easy layup. Here, Beheim matched up against Wendell Moore. Great defense by Moore. But the ref call... Oh, God. Would you, that ref needs to swallow his whistle. That ref needs to swallow his whistle. Another horrible call by the ref. Gerard gets it to Dolajai, almost turns it over. Dolajai down low, and they're going to call a foul on Javin. That is going to – is that his fourth? That might be the fourth foul on Delorier as Dolajai is down on the court. Uh, looks like it might be a left – maybe he hit knees with Javin here. It's pointing down to his left knee. And we're going to have a – Time out. Stoppage in play here at the Carrier Dome as we have a Syracuse player down. He's He looks okay, though. They're testing that left knee. It looks like it might just be banging knees here. Oh, yeah, that is. That does look like what it what it was. Uh, Javin with the... Javin's here. We can kind of get this angle... Do this replay angle here from above. You can see Dolajai's left knee goes into Javin's right knee there. And Dolajai actually walking off under his own power to the bench. One of the star players there for Syracuse. Good to see that he's all right. Javin protected on the play, though. He's wearing the cushy white knee pads. Yes, so... Javin walks away with no problem, except he does pick up a foul. And in to shoot Sidibe. Uh, since Dolajai cannot shoot the free throws, you are allowed to pick a player to shoot the free throws for you. And Sidibe shoots the free throw there and gets the first one to go. So Duke had extended itself out to a 10-point lead, and the lead now 7, actually, as Sidibe misses the second of two free throws. Trey Jones bringing it up the court. On the floor for the Blue Devils, Wendell, Stanley, Trey, Jack White, and Matthew Hurt. Vernon Carey on the bench for a bit of a rest here. Wendell Moore play. Oh, God, too much dribbling, Wendell. Wendell is just too – okay, it's dribble happy. We'll get back to it here at, uh, in a sec. They're going to call a foul on Trey Jones, and that is going to send us to the under-16 timeout. All right, in that situation – like, Wendell's trying to penetrate. Is they going to show a replay of that? No, they're not. Okay, so I don't have a replay to show you. But Wendell is, trying, is going left, trying to penetrate basically to the ACC – like, where the ACC is on the free throw line – but he's just dribbling way too much. Like, he's getting low, and he's dribbling in there, and he's dribbling in between three Syracuse defenders because you got the two at the top of the zone, and then you got the one in the who's sitting on the back line of the middle. What do you think that guy's going to do? That guy's going to come up as the two at the top of the zone is just going to collapse. So, literally, you're trying to – let me – let's draw it. Uh, I don't even know. Can we even draw it? Let's draw it out. As I'm sure as I'll get my epic pen up here in a second. Okay. All right. Watch. This is what happens. This is what happens. So here's the zone. One, two. There's Syracuse, right? Okay. 
that's the that's the two three zone essentially right i mean there's some more space in here so like we'll let's like call it like that all right and there's a guy here and essentially like you know here's the there's the free throw line in the middle okay so if you're wendell uh, i'm just gonna like here's here's when oh well, let's pick another color for wendell let's pick another color for our this is this is art. We're going next level here, chat. This is like, all right. So here's Wendell. All right, and Wendell's got the ball, and he wants to. I can't actually draw curves, so he, let's just do like this. Wendell's trying to do this thing in there, right, and get to the essentially get to the free throw line and maybe drive and penetrate or drive and kick. What do you think is going to happen? All right, this dude, this dude's going to come that way. That guy's going to come this way, and this guy is going to come up. So now you find yourself, so that's how it starts. Now Wendell finds himself in the middle of three Syracuse defenders and loses the ball. That's, that, that doesn't, that's why that doesn't work. That's why that doesn't work, all right? So, but what you, okay, but here's what would work. What you want to have happen is you want your buddy over here. You want your teammate. Let's call this Trey Jones. You want Trey to come in over do like this this little play right here just come in over here come in here and now what you want to do you want to pass you want to pass it to trey and who's now going to shoot it and then you're good all right and now we'll clear the map here is that's the zion williamson uh from last season and <sighs> Hey there, Joshua Mayan. Good after or good afternoon slash good evening. Good evening to you, sir. Good evening. Thank you for subscribing. Many thanks. Much appreciated. As, as we had our little zone education while we were at the at the break there. Uh, Duke up by seven. A little stoppage in play here. Not sure exactly what it's for. We'll get that in a second. And uh, Syracuse is going to inbound here from their baseline, actually. Duke looking much better, especially the last four minutes of the first half and the first four minutes of the second half. Duke has actually found itself. We are looking quite good here late. And this is Dolajai back in the game after a left knee bruise or, or hitting his left knee. And Dolajai is called for a foul, actually. A turnover by the Syracuse Orange. And Cassius Stanley is throwing this around. Here's Wendell. Don't do it again, Wendell. Now Wendell is at the ACC calling for it from here. You could get it. Now he swings out to the left-hand side. Trey Jones in and Trey Jones. Yes, Trey Jones. Nicely done. That dr shot drops in. Nicely. Trey Jones with the mid-range jump shot there. Gets it to go. Duke with a nine-point edge. Here with 15 minutes to go, and that shot is no good. And another offensive foul by Syracuse on Gourier on the rebound. I actually didn't even see that. And Beheim asking, where the heck is that foul? Which is kind of exactly what I was asking, because, you know, we, could be, we can be totally biased here, but I didn't see a foul. Anyway. Ball back to our Blue Devils. And Trey Jones now. Trey Jones going to try for three. Trey Jones from the outside. No, that shot's no good. Rebound to Duke out here. A three-pointer by O'Connell. Yes! O'Connell for three. He's got seven now. Give the man seven points for the night. Great shot there by O'Connell. And Syracuse answers, actually. Uh, it's actually just a two-point shot there for Syracuse. So Syracuse answers 54-44, Blue Devils. O'Connell Wendell flashing to the middle again. O'Connell on the outside. Four perimeter shooters for the Blue Devils spread out across the three-point line. Jones at the ACC logo. Couldn't get the ball to him there. And 
called blocking foul. They call a blocking foul on Elijah Hughes. Coach K calling for a stack formation here. This is uh, baseline out of bounds again for our Blue Devils. Are we going to get it? Yes, Jack White. Jack White thought about the three. Syracuse almost brings a double team. Does not. Outside to Wendell. Wendell working in. Here's Trey Jones again in the right's position. It gets it to Jack White. And Jack White for three drills that one. Duke now starting to hit on all cylinders. All right, I'm like I can breathe a lot easier now. Up by 13. Although we were up big against Pitt too, and here's Syracuse trying to answer. Oh my goodness! They finally get a shot to go from the outside. Wow. And a turnover by Duke. So just when I thought we could breathe more easily, a eh, actually not quite. 12 turnovers for our Blue Devils now. God, it's so sloppy. Just, ugh. Syracuse trying again. That one goes off back iron. Rebound down to Vernon Carey. Syracuse thought they could strike again. Lightning not striking twice for the Creos. Oh, AOC in the corner. It's a beautiful look. It's a beautiful look. But wait, why did you call if they stopped the play? The, ugh. Wow, O'Connell was about to have his second three-pointer there. They called a foul on Syracuse. Just let it go. This is ah, this is why I think there should be like, you should just like let the, it's just like in soccer. There's continuation. Just like let them play. You still have the ball. Vernon Carey trying to go down low in it amongst three and one. Yes, and one. I couldn't tell if the ref was gonna signal an offensive charge there. Jeez, that was close. Vernon Carey just being a man. Let's check the replay here. Nice feed there from AOC. Great assist. Vernon Carey. Vernon Carey down low. Carey there with the left hand. Nicely done. Whew. Beautiful. Well done by Vernon Carey. And Vernon Carey completes the three-point play. All right, so Duke managing to extend the lead back out to 13 as Carey goes to the bench. Still no Joey Baker tonight. I wonder if uh, we'll get word on maybe the postgame of why he's not playing. Interesting. Dolajai gives this one up to Buddy. Still just Buddy and Bea Dolajai playing out front, and they're going to call a foul on O'Connell. Trying to go on top, go trying to go over a screen. Uh, Airhead, 42069. Everyone saying in chat, for those who uh, aren't able to read it, everyone underestimates Duke's three-point shooting this year, but between White, Hurt, and Jones... When he shoots threes, they're actually pretty good. Yeah, and I would actually add Stanley to that mix as well. It's a great call out. Uh, thanks for hanging out and being in chat and watching. Oh, what a block by Jack White! Except it's reject. Jack's White. Jack White's blocks always land in the in the. It seems like they always land in the hands of the opponent, but that's okay. And. Uh, this shot is a three seconds on the shot clock for Syracuse. The shot by Gerard is wild. And here, up ahead to O'Connell. Yes! Trey Jones finds O'Connell. Basically, that would have been called off sides if we were playing soccer. But luckily, we are not. So O'Connell slams it down. Give him nine points here. Nicely done by O'Connell. Off a great defensive possession by our Blue Devils. And here's Dolajai trying to get one to go. No. Sidibe should have been called for a foul against Javin but gets away with it. Let's see if they give us a replay here as we go to the under 12. We'll show the replay here. Here is Jack White there. Oh, no, this is the AOC three. And Jack White three from the corner there as well. I don't think if we're going to get the replay for the baseball pass from Trey out to AOC, but we will have that for sure as one of our highlights which we'll post here right when we're done with the game. Yep, so Stanley 2. Um, now we're talking about uh, the three-point shooting here for the Blue Devils. So 
Let's so. I mean, the problem is Jack White has been inconsistent. But if like if he just contributes like one or two threes a game, that's really all you need from him. That's like that's that's more that's that's exactly like what we want from him. But the other one I would add to this too, and we sl- we talked about it earlier a little bit, is Joey Baker is a threat from three as well. And so the the difference there is, is it seems like Joey is very streaky, like very hit or miss. Like when he's on, he's on, and then when he's not. He's not. Luckily for us this year, he's had more good games than not good games. We haven't seen him so far tonight. I wonder now, you know, with the lead maybe stretching out here to 15, if he starts getting some PT. But it seems like Coach is favoring O'Connell over Baker tonight. And uh, O'Connell's delivering, uh, coming off the bench with nine points here so far. We looked at halftime and his stats from his games against Syracuse last year. He had 16 points in the first game and 20 in the second game against Syracuse. So absolutely, like, you know, O'Connell likes to play the likes to play against the zone, it seems. And but, yeah, it's a great point here by the chat brought up uh, where people are sort of underestimating Duke's three point shooting. And we were looking at the stats a couple weeks ago at um uh, looking at the stats a couple weeks ago and you know duke is actually shooting around 38 percent from the three so it's actually better than it has been in, in past years uh james bond james bond what a name thank you for subscribing many thanks uh thanks for hanging out thanks for uh Thanks for watching the stream. Thanks for listening. I appreciate everybody hanging out in the stream tonight. It's been a great game. It started off a little tenuous for our Blue Devils, but they have managed to make it happen here. This was the this was the graphic we were looking at earlier, and we can see uh, if we zoom. Wow, I zoomed in way too. Okay, streamer fail. I zoomed in way too hard. So Duke uh, sitting at 38% three-point shooting. This We did this graphic a couple weeks ago, so not quite, you know, but... Actually, our 2014-2015 national title team was shooting at 37%. So like we're right around there as far as the three-point shooting is concerned. Last year's team was really not good at this, though. 31%, right? So we're shooting a full about 20 to 25, but it's 20% better than, um, well, so not 20% like in whole numbers, but, you know, between 30, we're up 7%, which is a 20% improvement over last year over last year's 31%. So, um, but yeah, and then see some of the teams in the past, we've traditionally been about a 40% uh, three point shooting team. And here is the promo for next week's game against Carolina. That'll be at Carolina and the Dean Smith center there. And we will be broadcasting that one. We will be back here doing Duke Carolina next week. Can't wait for that one, especially given how the Carolina has struggled. And wow, okay, Syracuse just puts a whew, gets a dunk there. Saying White and Hurt hit the threes that get them going. Their threes this season seem like they're always momentum changers. Yeah, I mean, the threes for sure. Like, they've keyed off uh, those those players here. And here's White again from the three, but it's actually blocked. It's blocked by Sidibe, so that ends up coming up short. Syracuse with an opportunity now and a little bit of momentum here. Driving, and Jack White blocks it again. Yeah, it's a good call out from chat too. Like the threes kind of key off these Duke runs that uh, where we see, and then like we just, you know, it's the patented, the famous Duke run, right? And it play, it's kind of plays like a Duke team has in the past where we're very familiar with Duke being able to hit the three consistently and use that as a weapon. I mean, we used to see that all the way back in the day. O'Connell here gets called for a cylinder violation. That was the symbol there by the ref. Uh, that was the – this thing is the cylinder violation, the new rule this year that they put in where if you basically have a player, you draw an imaginary cylinder all the way up to the ceiling, and uh, a an defensive player is not allowed to violate that space. Although, you know, you see players playing, like, close to one another, and so you're like, well, is that, like – yeah, and actually, in this case – it looks like Beheim is the one that initiates the contact, but O'Connell is the one that gets called for the foul because O'Connell had vi- quote unquote violated the cylinder. Ah, uh, it's like a pff, stupid, like stupid rule. Um, in any case, here's the cross court pass and O'Connell thinking about three fakes takes three. That's off back iron. No good. Vernon Carey. Oh, Vernon Carey and Matthew Hurt get hit each other, but the ball winds up in the hands of O'Connell. 
And Duke is just going to reset this one. This looks like Syracuse stopped playing there for a second as two Blue Devils went down in the paint. Oh, O'Connell is wide open in the corner. Matthew Hurt with a shot fake. Hurt for three. Hurt can't get it. Let's go Stanley! Stanley, another momentum play for Stanley. Coming in completely unguarded. Nobody knows is there. Talking about the threes of momentum, how about Stanley's dunks this season? Those have been momentum plays. As Trey Jones gets called for a foul here. Let's look at that one again. Turn this thing on. Here's the replay. There's Hurt. That's the missed three. Stanley just stealthily finding his way into the paint there. Whew. Beautiful. Can't wait for Duke UNC uh, next week. Airhead. Yep. Best rivalry in sports, hands down. I was actually uh, – I was talking to a UNC guy at work and somebody just overheard us talking and he's like, uh, he's like, is that like a, I guess it, it's, he doesn't really know that much about sports. He's like, is that a big rivalry? I was like, only the biggest rivalry in all of sports, professional college or thereafter, or like, you know, it doesn't matter. A 11 point game here with 10, 18 to go. And it is Stanley O'Connell, Trey, Hurt and Carey on the floor. Carey trying to get position on Dolajai. Carey going in with the and one. Beautiful play. Strong move by Carey. Yes. Carey, great. Carey now has, well, he's well into double-double territory. I believe now this is going to be 16? 16 points for Carey? Oh, man. Again, three, three, <laughs> Elijah Hughes just throws up his arms and is like, come on, man. Like, what do you expect me to do? Like, <laughs> there's no way. And Carey finishes the free throw there. Nicely done by Vernon Carey. He's getting, he's actually been hitting his free throws. Start off a little shaky from the free throw line, but Vernon Carey has hit his last couple here. Foul against our Blue Devils. I think this is going to put Syracuse on the line. I think we're over the limit. Yeah. What's my favorite memory of a Duke UNC game? Okay, I have several of them. Um, the Duke, so I have several of them because I was in school for a lot of them. So the 2010 game where we ran them out of the gym, I think this was the game in camera, not the game at Carolina. Um, actually, we'll, we'll like rewind the clock even more. So my freshman year was 08, 09. And that was the year we tented. And so that uh, we actually lost that game. We were up at halftime. This was Greg Paulus's senior season. We were up at halftime. And then Gerald Henderson, not Gerald Henderson. Um, crap. Uh, who was it? Uh, Ty Lawson. That was it. Ty Lawson as O'Connell. Nicely shot. Nice shot. Mid-range shot by O'Connell. Ty Lawson and Tyler Hansborough, also their senior season, they took over in the second half and ended up winning the game for UNC. UNC would go on to win the national title that year. So that was unfortunate because we were up at home. The next year, however, when we won our national title, we ran them out of the damn gym. And that was a blowout as Shire, Smith, and Singler, Zubik, and Lance Thomas just completely demolished UNC in 2010. So that was a good one. And then we'd have to fast forward a couple years. Um, well, actually, no, we don't have to fast forward that much at all because then we have the Austin Rivers shot, which I remember, like, I, like, I remember exactly where I was. We were at the fraternity house for that one. And uh, that was a crazy shot because we were losing like the entire game and we ended up winning it at the end. And so forever, Orson Rivers forever immortalized in Duke history uh, because of that one. And so that was good as Dolajai makes one of two at the line, still a 13 point margin for the Blue Devils. And then uh, the 2015 comeback was also spectacular. And oh, oh, AOC, AOC going baseline here, gets it to Hurt. It's going to be a hockey assist. Hurt, yes. Hurt manages to pump fake, a pump fake that would m make Bob Knight jealous, actually, or shot fake, rather. And Buddy Bayheim falls for it, hook, line, and sinker. And Matthew Hurt is going to go to the line for three. So nicely done by Matthew Hurt. And so the 2015 win was great. And then... Believe it or not, I had actually not seen a home win in Cameron against UNC until, I mean, we had gone to Duke for like five, six years, and it took me until the, what was it, 2017, when we were uh, 
when we were chairing the basketball committee, was it 16? One of the two years where we finally beat them at home. Yes, it was 17 because they stole the game like in 16 and they beat us at home and it was like, ugh, it was a freaking tragedy. Um, yeah, until 17. And like that one was, that one felt really good because I was like, I finally got my like UNC home win here. And so I've got some pretty good, so those are like, you know, my top memories, all of which, or most of which while I was at school. So um, as Duke, the, the quick stat there was Duke has been shooting 12 of 14 from the free throw line, which is 86%. And the shot for Syracuse hits every part of the rim and just doesn't go down around the world and here from the outside. Oh, wow. They finally managed to get one to go. That's a big three pointer here. Gerard finally hits from three. And Syracuse, uh, Beheim going to call a timeout here. It's a 12-point margin, 8.36 to go. This I do not believe this will count as the media timeout. This is just a timeout here by Syracuse, as maybe Syracuse hoping that this kind of triggers them back in. He says, uh, oh, chat saying, yeah, I love the game where we blew them out, and Austin River shot is unforgettable. Oh, to the Tyler Hansborough bloody nose. Yeah, I mean that's the other that's the other big one, right? That one happened. Gerald, that was Gerald Henderson. Maybe it happened a year or two before I actually got to Duke. So I mean that's like the other iconic moment that everyone that a lot of folks remember. At least like folks kind of like um, like our age, that kind of thing. But uh, but yeah, so Duke UNC rivalry renewed next weekend. It'll be at Carolina. The Duke home uh, game at Duke will be later in the uh, will be in March, um, and we'll be back doing that one. So should be plenty of fun as we have hit the. So we are at a Syracuse timeout. Let's do a quick stat check here on our uh, points leaders for everybody. Uh, Vernon Carey with 22 points so far tonight and 12 rebounds. Man, he has just been. Pheno phenomenal phenomenal shooting six of eight from the free throw line doing really well there as well catch stanley with nine points AO, uh, aoc we got alex with 11 actually the second uh sec second highest point scorer on duke right now is alex with 11 points having himself a really nice night 15 minutes four of eight from the field two of two from the free throw line he did get a three-pointer uh, taken away from him, so <laughs> uh, we should should be more. But uh, Stanley bringing it up next with nine, and then uh, Javin Delorier with eight, Trey Jones with seven as well. As we, uh, I expected to see more of the Trey Jones trying to hit that mid-range jump shot as a way of trying to beat the zone, but Duke actually shooting well enough from three-point land to beat the zone that way. And actually, when you got Vernon Carey down low, you can just do whatever you want. Anyway, the zone just doesn't just doesn't matter right now. It just doesn't matter. The, the defense is not going to stop Vernon Carey. Want to take a quick moment before we resume here to welcome in all the viewers and thank everybody who's been watching in chat we had a uh, thank the folks thank you to everyone who's subscribed tonight make sure you do so we can you can catch we do we'll do highlights right after the game i'll cut them up and post them and uh they're duke highlights say we have the largest attendance we had 31,458 here for at the Carrier Dome. So 31,458 sad Syracuse fans at the end of this, basically. The more uh, the more they the more they come to the game, the more disappointed they're gonna be. The more disappointed people there are when they're gonna leave. Although it does look like there are some Duke fans in attendance. So um, Duke here on a run out, Buddy Bayheim gonna go for three and Buddy gets a th three pointer to go. Wow, so it is now from a 15-point lead. We are down to nine after Syracuse has hit some timely shots, and Trey Jones manages to get this one out of a double team. And they're going to call call Hughes, call Gerard for a foul. They're going to call for a Syracuse foul here. Uh, Syracuse over the limit. Any more Syracuse fouls will send Duke to the free throw line where they have been shooting well tonight. 12 of 14 so far from the line as O'Connell will step up for the front end of the one and one
And I'm not going to say anything because I'm not going to jinx it. I'm just going to sit here quietly <laughs> as he comes as he comes up to the line. Uh, oh, come on. All right, O'Connell misses the front end of the one and one. But Syracuse attempts to go for the rebound and sends it out of bounds. So it is out of bounds against Syracuse. So Duke will get another crack at it. Probably better than, it's probably one of the best outcomes you could have hoped for after missing the front end of a one and one. Uh, Vernon to the bench. Matthew Hurt in the game. No, Carey actually still out. AOC to the bench, sorry. Wendell Moore in. Stanley in. Trey Jones, Hurt, and uh, Vernon Carey, the other players. And we have a kick ball by Syracuse. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Carey, Carey knows Zaya, but he is a B. I, actually, be really interesting. One of the things we were going to do on our show, we do like a weekly show here for Duke as well on this channel, is to compare Zion and Vernon Carey. And Matthew Hurt nails the three from the outside. That is huge as Syracuse was starting to get back into this game, and it's a turnover by Syracuse. Here, Quincy was stepping out of bounds, and he gives it right to Trey Jones. Trey Jones now going to set up the offense. A huge shot by Matthew Hurt. We were saying how these threes are so timely and momentum. They're momentum killers for Syracuse in this case. Wendell driving hard. Oh, Wendell. Wendell, too much dribbling yet again. Tries to go into the teeth of the Syracuse zone. And he's going to pay for it here. And Buddy Bayheim is going to hit the three on the other end. Oh, God. Why? We talked about this, Wendell. Wendell trying to go in twice, same result, twice. You can't dribble into the like the middle of that Syracuse zone. He's just going to get picked off. Oh, it's talking about trying to get picked off. Syracuse tries to go for it and misses it. And Vernon Carey tries to go up and Quincy blocks him. And then are they going to call a foul? Or is this just going to be a lay-in for Stanley? Yeah, hurt again with huge momentum changing three as well. Yeah. Yeah, and then Buddy hits it on the other end. So basically the two teams trading three-pointers here. We have hit the under eight timeout. So uh, I believe it's going to be a foul against Syracuse when we come back. That should be... Uh, that should... Uh, this is game... I... Okay, this. Yes, yes, it is a foul on Quincy Gourier. Um, so foul on, on Gourier as Carey tries to go up with the offensive rebound. Give him 13 rebounds so far tonight. Wow, he's playing. He's playing big time. I mean... Something, yeah, we are, we're ahead by 10, but like Syracuse is just like not going to go away. Syracuse is not going to go away, especially at home. Buddy behind has been averaging three and a half, three point urge a game. Where is he at right now? Because he hasn't been hitting them and he's finally turned it on. He's at two, two he's at two of six right now. Yeah, need to keep scoring. Need to keep this going here. I'm just checking the... Uh... Yeah, so Syracuse averaging about 73 points per game, which is exactly where Duke is right now. We're at 74. We're averaging 83 points a game. So, you know, if Syracuse is going to hit its average, this is definitely not good enough here. Still 6.55 to go in the game. Three-point percentage here for the Blue Devils, 36% on the season, 35% from Syracuse. So both this strength for both teams, actually. Duke shooting very well from the free throw line. That is actually, man, if we weren't shooting, we've gotten better. If we weren't shooting well from the free throw line, it would have, it would be ugly. It would be ugly. We've managed to secure 8, 10, 12 points at the free throw line. Team stat. Actually, free throws. Yeah, two of 15. 
Oh, Syracuse actually 18 of 23. I hadn't checked that stat on the side of Syracuse. Syracuse actually just they're make they've made more than we've even taken. What? That's crazy. Wow, Syracuse is making a living at the line. Actually, it's it's not Syracuse, but it's it's Florida State that is the best free throw shooting team in the ACC. Actually, one of the better three uh, three point shooting teams in the country. Um, here we got some highlights. We'll uh, flash these up. So get some highlights from Vernon Carey here, who's been playing one heck of a game. 22 points so far on the night with 13 rebounds. He's just been doing it all for the Blue Devils. And nobody can stop him. Nobody can stop him. As Carey now steps up to the free throw line, shooting two. And Vernon Carey, and yes, makes the first of two. 6.55 to go in the game here. Duke leading so far by 11. And in a game that Syracuse was leading for the majority of the first half, Duke went on a 12-point uh, run to end the half and then opened the second half on a 9-2 run and now finds itself with a 12-point lead here in the Carrier Dome in front of 31,000 Syracuse hopefuls, uh, soon-to-be sad fans. And this one down, yay to, down low to Gourier does not no good on the shot there. Rebound down to Vernon Carey is 14th of the evening. Vernon just being the vacuum cleaner. Trey Jones has to get this thing over the timeline. It's a 10 second call. Trey, what are you doing? Wait. Really? Wow, what an uncharacteristic turnover for Trey Jones. Wow, okay. 15 turnovers for our Blue Devils tonight. We average like 13 a game. And here's Dolajai working on Matthew Hurt. Great defense by Hurt, but Dolajai gets his own rebound. Dolajai now kicks it out to Hughes, and Hughes for three. That shot is off the back iron too long. Rebound down to Vernon Carey. So Duke doesn't pay for the turnover there. Wow, what an uncharacteristic turnover there by Trey Jones. Hughes 0 for 7 from 3, and here's Hurt going baseline. Hurt just going to put it in with the right hand, and it's a blocking foul, actually. So he will go to the line to shoot 2. With 6 minutes to go here. Oh, that's right. Where is Coach Sire and Nolan Smith? We didn't talk about that at halftime. Okay, um, let me make sure I get this right. So, Coach Shire, uh, we, our our reporters, our real live reporters, were all over it as Matthew Hurt gets the first of the two. So, Nolan Smith is home with his daughter apparently, who um, who is in, who is in the hospital. So, we wish her well. Hopefully, it's nothing serious. But Nolan Smith's uh, young daughter is in the hospital, so he's not on the bench. And Coach Shire had an emergency appendectomy earlier today in Syracuse. So he's not in the game either. So, um, yeah, and he had to get that removed while the team was in Syracuse, apparently. So a little wacky stuff going on here with the Duke coaching staff, but Duke so far managing to respond. Hopefully everything is all right with our with our team members there, team members and their families. And hopefully we can have them back in short order. But yeah, the uh, the Duke bench a little depleted there in the coaching category. And Trey Jones, once again, has five seconds to get this over the timeline to Wendell Moore. And Wendell does. Now he's dribbling and he's going straight in. Oh, it's a tough shot by Wendell. No good. Rebound down to Syracuse after Javin tries to put it back, but can't do so. Still a 14-point game here. Uh, sorry, Carey tries to put it back, but couldn't do so. Oh, but he he did. Sorry, I lost the stream there for a second, and I was like, Wait. it got all blurry, and I was like, who's who? Yes, 14 points there. Um, as Vernon Carey extends his point lead tonight, the stat being shown here is 4 of 21 from 3 for Syracuse, shooting 19%. Of course, Duke defense having some to do with that. Syracuse just in general... 
Not shooting well, and almost a turnover. Lands in the hands of Vernon Carey. No, can't quite finish. Jack White tried for the rebound, but couldn't get it either. Here's Elijah Hughes. Elijah Hughes trying to drive on Carey. Elijah does get in, but the, it's too strong, and Dolajai is going to get an and one. Foul called on Jack White. Um, oh, yeah, Airhead saying Shire is one of my favorite uh, Blue Devils of all time. So check out the... Uh, there's there 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 we got the there we go there's the Shire jersey in the back it says number 30 which has been worn actually since I was in school it's been worn by two players it's been worn by coach Shire uh, Shire when he was in school and Seth Curry and that's the only people to have uh to have worn that 30 jersey so but that is that I got that because of Shire uh not because Seth was not yet in school when I was there and what are they going to call here? They're going to call an offensive foul against Cassius Stanley? Oh, my God. So we're rooting for a 20-20 and 20 game by Carey. What would he have to do to get that? He has got he needs four more boards in order to do that. It's totally possible. Let's track it here. Buddy Beheim puts up a wild air ball, and Cassius Stanley grabs it, but it lands in the hands of Syracuse. No, they're going to call a foul on Quincy because he went to the floor grabbing Matthew Hurt, who had picked up the rebound. And it's absolutely a foul. I mean, it's only it's an 11-point game, but Syracuse has been knocking on the door. Quincy Gouillet has fouled out here with 436 remaining. And seven points in the game. Vernon Carey could very possibly get his twenty, get twenty and twenty. That would be, that would be impressive. That that'd be cool. We'd have to put a, a highlight reel together for uh, the twenty and twenty if he did get that. Some foul trouble here for Syracuse. Dolajai with four, Sidibe with three. Matthew Hurt to the line as we are now in the double bonus. So we will be shooting two the rest of the way. Hurt makes the first. And Hurt for the second misses that one, actually. So keep the margin at 12 as Syracuse is now out on the run. Jimmy Beheim with the ball, working on Matthew Hurt into the paint, hands it down to Sidibe, and Sidibe finishes easily at the at the rim. Ten point margin here. Uh, it's ten points is not going to be enough going here under four. And Wendell Moore, Wendell gets it out to Goldwire. Goldwire, who hasn't, who's now back in the game. We haven't seen him much of the second half. Oh, and Trey Jones just throws it away. Oh, what? Trey Jones. What? You... Wow. Okay. It's like the team is like not itself right now. This is bizarre. We saw like Duke let Pitt back into the game and now they're letting Syracuse back into the game. This team lacks killer instinct. It needs to develop killer instinct, which our national title teams had. But this team hasn't quite developed that yet. Still time, however. I'm not panicking about it. The three pointer here from Syracuse ends up in a foul. And so Syracuse is going to be at the free throw line when we come back. And yeah, on Wendell. Wendell fouling a three-point shooter. Oh, that is that is brutal. So Syracuse is going to have an opportunity to bring this lead down to seven here. And the question is, has any Duke player ever gotten a 20-20 20 and 20 game? I'm sure it's... I'm sure it's happened. I I mean, I'm sure it's ha like back in the day, like I would like there's too, there's too many like good Duke players from like I mean, heck, Leitner could have done it for all we like for all I know, uh Boozer, Duhan, like any of like any of those guys. Um but yeah, we are like we are like not finishing this game strong right now. I don't know if Zion ever actually got the 20 and 20, though. We can check, we can take a look. Let's see. Stats. 
Duke players with 20 points and 20 rebounds. Mm. I don't know. It's like not easy to search for. Yeah, it's not easy to search for, so I don't actually know. Um, hmm. We'll have to put our stats folks on it here. But yeah, Vernon Carey's going to have to do some work if he wants 20 and 20. As we're coming out here, out of the, out of the under four minute timeout here, <clears throat> Trey just having an uncharacteristic, you know, they're showing his stats about having a 6.8 assist per game, but and one of the best uh, assist to turnover ratios in the country. Yeah. I agree. Chat's saying like Duke's Duke's problem here has been, has been the the inability to close out games, and we saw this we saw this problem in the game against Pitt. There, Buddy Bayheim misses the first of the three free throws. Luckily for us, Jones with six assists tonight. He uh, as Bayheim hits the second. His fair share of turnovers, however, actually the entire Duke team having its fair share of turnovers, just not really. Not really playing like themselves in that department. Three turnovers, so not the best in terms of assist to turnover ratio. He's, we've definitely seen him do way better. And Beheim's going to shoot this final free throw, and that is no good. So he actually only ends up making one of the three. <clears throat> and Syracuse extending their pressure to full court here. Cassius Stanley gets it to hurt to Trey, and now we're over. And here we go. Alley-oop! Oh, no, it's deflected by Syracuse, but it goes out of bounds. All right, so we're still in business here. 19 seconds on the shot clock. 19 seconds on the shot clock. We've seen plenty of baseline inbounds plays that have worked really well for us and this over to Vernon Carey no it's another turnover what are we doing what are we doing I'm gonna lose my mind this is terrible we are literally trying to give the game away oh my god why is it a foul on Vernon Carey because the Syracuse player ends up on the floor Carey's like 50 pounds bigger than this dude. What? Like, that's not a thing. Jesus. Oh, God. Jones got to stop telegraphing the alley-oops. I mean, Jones got to stop throwing the ball away. Just like in general. <laughs> oh, both Syracuse free throws go. Now it's a six-point game. No, sorry, it's a seven-point game. Math is hard. We can't even inbound the goddamn ball. All right. <laughs> and we managed to do that. Wendell's going to get called for a charge! God! <sighs> I'm 5,000 miles away and across the country, and that is the easiest call this side of God knows what. Like, oh, pass it! Pass it. Vernon Carey is sitting right there. Wendell Moore is fouled out. So apparently he can't turn the ball over anymore because he's fouled out. Syracuse in an 8-1 run. If we see that replay again, you will see that Vernon Carey was just sitting there at the baseline. All Wendell had to do was pass the ball to Carey, who was just going to dunk it. Mm. Wow. Okay. Hughes now at the free throw line. Sidesteps, puts one up, can't get it to go. The putback by Syracuse. Man, at this point, we may as well just deserve to lose this damn thing. Five-point game with three minutes to go. Syracuse extending once again full court. And now this is Cassius Stanley. Cassius Stanley going to go in with the right hand. Yes, and one. What a huge play by Cassius Stanley. Man, we were saying how his dunks are momentum changers. That was beautiful. Cassius Stanley, a much-needed bucket here for the Blue Devils. This is a beautiful play. When he gets... See? And here's the difference. 
Wendell Moore would have gotten called for a charge. Cassius Stanley knows exactly when to go up with it and has the uh, uses his body well, gets the Syracuse defender off balance. Mm. Stanley, yes, well done, well played by Stanley. Converts the three. <laughs> I'm not in. <laughs> uh. Oh, man, we have a Razorback fan in the chat. I love it. I love it. It's all good. Here, Gerard for three. He can't get that one to go. Rebound down to the Blue Devils. Hey, you can cheer for either team. Just keep it clean in chat, everybody. We're all good. Just having a nice Saturday here. Saturday afternoon of full of college basketball. 82-74. Blue Devils leading with 2.36 to go in the game as my stream has decided to stop working and thank you, ESPN, for just being terrible. All right, 2.35 to go, and it looks like Duke will find itself at the line. Man, uh, Trey Jones here at the line, shooting two. And I cheated. I looked at the uh, at the game cast, which is ahead of me, so he does, he does make the two free throws. I don't have to hold my breath here. Uh, yeah, Stanley, I mean... Stanley is just, I mean, and we saw it ever since we did. So over the summer, we did a, a, a special show over the summer with our crew here at Relive on a, like a scouting. It was like a scouting show. And we had all five. We got mixtapes from all five of the uh, of the of the freshmen. And I was like, man, Stanley is one word. He's explosive. He's explosive and he's proven it. He's played so well. He's just been he shows up when you need him to. And he like his plays bring that Zion spark to the team. Like he's not Zion Williamson, and neither is Vernon Carey. But like Zion Williamson was like the athleticism and spark of Cassius Stanley, and the body and like big like presence of Vernon Carey like in one. And that's like re that's like rare. That's like once in a generation. We understand. We understand this. But now we have like but Cassius brings that energy and that fire where those Zion dunks. I mean, anytime Cassius puts it in. Uh, dunks goes just goes for the dunk. It's phenomenal. The first of the free throws misses here for Syracuse as we manage to foul them. And yes, we have stabilized the ship here, so to speak. And the second free throw also misses, but the rebound down to Hughes for Syracuse. And Hughes can't get it to go. He had those a lid on the basket for Hughes. Sidibe with the rebound. Fight for the rebound. Everybody trying to go for it. And... They are not calling a foul, but it is out of bounds. Apparently, Trey Jones was out of bounds when he touched the ball, attempting or trying to go for the rebound. And Coach is going to call a timeout here, uh, wanting to drop a defense as Syracuse is going to inbound this one. So presumably going to draw up both a defense and an offensive set, uh, both whether it's a make or a miss uh, on for Syracuse. So we'll see what we want to do differently. Um, also, okay, this is crazy. So here's, this is during the timeout. I would just put it. How are we a two seed? Oh, okay. And you can see that my, like there, there's this, that's what I've been dealing with all night there. How are we a two seed? Like, really? Really? I know it doesn't really matter right now, but it will. And we will put ourselves at the one line. As this is going to be, this is going to basically tie us with Florida State for number two in the ACC. Um, and here on the inbounds, and uh, Dolajai puts it in for two as an attempted steal by Buddy Beheim. Looks like gets it back up to Stanley. Stanley, think about the alley oop. Stanley with the alley oop to Vernon Carey. There it is. Duke again, trading buckets here, not good enough. Oh, Syracuse's Hughes finally gets a shot to go. That is huge for Syracuse. Hughes has been shooting, hasn't hit a three-pointer, one of eight. Now, wow, that was a big shot. Pulls it within seven. Ooh. Oh, well, you need guidance. You still like Duke. Hey, everyone's welcome here. No problems, except for UNC fans. Except for UNC fans. <laughs> uh, everyone else is welcome. Yeah, Florida State's going to be a really good game as well. So it's, so we have a crazy schedule coming up, right? We got next week, we got, um, we've got we got a Tuesday game against Boston College, who just beat Carolina. So they're feeling pretty good. I don't quite recall if that game is... Let me just check my calendar real quick. That game is in Boston College. All right, so we have to go to Boston College. 
Um, we have to go to Boston College for that, and they're coming off the win against Carolina. Then we have to come back. Uh, then we have to go on the road to Chapel Hill. So that'll be our third straight road game. And then we have the game against Florida State as we're having some trouble inbounding this. Vernon Carey gets it over to Trey Jones. And Trey Jones just runs into, yeah, Trey Jones runs into Gerard, who gets called for a block there. And the game against Florida State will be uh, the 10th against, oh, against Florida State. That'll be in Cameron. And actually, I have, a, man, I have memories of a Florida State game. My senior year, that was in twenty in twenty twelve. They beat us there at the buzzer. Wow, and uh, that that was a that was a miserable game. Uh, and then of course, however, last year's let us not forget last year's uh, game against Florida State, the one in Tallahassee where Zion got poked in the eye, had to leave for basically the entire second half of the game, and then Cam Reddish at the end nails the three pointer for for the win uh, for the Blue Devils here. Uh, so pl- that, so we have a great slate coming up. We will be, we won't be doing a live stream for BC. We'll be doing one for Carolina next Saturday. And then we will absolutely be doing one for Florida state as those who are big games. So make sure to drop a sub and you'll get notified when we come back and just join the chat and join the discussion here with the fellow blue devil fans. Wow. Gerard hits a three again. So Syracuse finally hitting from three. It's now a six point game. This is far from over guys and gals. Cassius Stanley manages to get this in the front court. Just try to burn some clock. No, he's going to go straight for it. Yes, and one. Cassius Stanley says, forget about burning clock. I'm going to go right to the rack with this and go in for two. Another spectacular play by Cassius Stanley. Check here on the rebound. On the replay, rather. Cassius Stanley just goes in. Ooh, beautifully done by Cassius. This is another replay. He's just going. So Syracuse basically... So the other way to beat the zone, the other way to beat the zone is to not let it even set up, which we actually haven't seen as much of tonight. But because uh, Syracuse has been playing full court press to try to turn over Duke in the front court, there's the, these opportunities have arisen in transition. So when you get like Cassius Stanley, who's so athletic and he can just run the entire floor, he says, I don't even need... Like, burning 30 seconds off the clock is essentially the same as getting a basket because that puts them down another possession, which is essentially like putting them down another 30 seconds. So if you can score, then that's phenomenally, that's just as good. So Cassius takes advantage and puts it in. We have a Duke foul here on the other end of the floor. Yeah, best way to beat the zone is to blow it up before they can set up. Happy about this win against Alabama. Oh, oh, so nice. Nice win against Alabama. I didn't actually see that one uh, earlier. We were taking a look at some scores earlier. Let's take a look here. And Syracuse manages to get the first of the two, and they do hit two of two, actually. And once again, here, Trey Jones now trying to beat the zone down the floor. And we do, we actually do get this ball into the half court. And we will the zone will set up. So we will just burn the 30 seconds here off the clock. Now, the holy grail, right, is if you both burn 30 seconds off the clock and then you score. Uh, in this case, Buddy Beheim here with a foul as Trey Jones tries to drive in. Ooh, Nova went down. Wow. Really? Oh, yeah, Nova lost to Creighton by 15. Ooh, holy cow. Let's see, the Gators in a tough game. Auburn beat Kentucky. Oh, yeah, and Arkansas, a four-point winner over Alabama from earlier today. Congratulations, Uni Guided. Yes, congratulations to your Arkansas Razorbacks on that win as Trey Jones steps up to the line and knocks down the free throw there. It's a nine-point game. Knocks down the pair of free throws, rather. Nine-point game with one minute to go, and Hughes tries to go up, and Jack White blocks him, but it's called a foul. It's so much more exciting when you just get to... uh, when it's actually just a block and the ref can swallow their whistle. It doesn't look like I know uh, I know chat here. We were we really wanted the 
We wanted the 20 and 20 for Vernon Carey. I don't think we're going to get it, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, he's got 60. Unless somehow he picks up four rebounds in the next minute. I don't know if we can get the 20 and 20, but he is at the scorer's table right now looking to check in. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, I think a lot of us wish Zion Williamson was also back in Duke, the comment there in chat. You know, he did say he would have... Uh, he thought about playing another year, but he's been playing really well in the NBA. His first five games are pretty good here. Tr do having trouble inbounding the ball and will call for time. Uh, Duke calls for time here uh, to avoid the five-second violation. Don't want to give Syracuse an easy one right underneath the bucket here in only a seven-point game. Duke actually scoring 10 points to the better of its season average at the moment. So, or 13 points, actually. High-scoring game across here for both teams. Both teams shooting a decent percentage from the floor. Well, actually, Duke shooting 57% from the floor. My goodness. Syracuse shooting 40%. But actually, where Syracuse oh, actually had an advantage against us at the free throw line, but now we're even. 25 to 29 at the free throw line for the Blue Devils. 26 for 39 at the free throw line for Syracuse. So the Syracuse free throw percentage, not as good. But they've taken 35 free throws. 35 free throws. What? That's like close to be a... Th Almost a third of their points. Duke now managing to actually get this one inbounding, inbounded as Trey Jones bringing this up the court. And Duke now just content to run clock as Syracuse bring in its double teams. And Coach K will call his another timeout, the final timeout here for the Blue Devils with 52 seconds to go on the clock and 16 seconds on the shot clock. Oh, how long? Oh, Airhead. Um... So I am not currently at Duke, but I went to Duke from 20, uh, 2008 to 2012 uh, for engineering and then back uh, for, at 2015 to 2017 for uh, Fuqua, for NBA. So a total of six years uh, at, at Duke. It was so good the first time I was just like, I, I got to go back. So... <laughs> And then when we were um, when we were back in grad school, there's a couple couple of the moderators here in chat. Um, couple of the moderators here in chat. You saw Eric. Uh, we were both down at school together. We actually ran the uh, graduate student basketball committee. So not the Cameron, not the the undergrads that you see on TV on the side, but on the ends of the basket. That's where the grad students sit. Uh, we managed all of that uh, during our second year uh, in grad school. So. So we have been Duke fans for a long time. <laughs> hey, Missouri is a fine. I've got nothing. Uni, I'm sure. Missouri, I, I, I've actually never, never been to Missouri. Ever, I have never been to Missouri. No, I had to think about that for a second. I have bounced around a bit, but. Never been to Missouri. Stack formation here with the Blue Devils as we try to actually get this one inbounded, and we do to act to cash to Stanley in the backcourt. Uh, Stanley gets this one up to Matthew Hurt, Trey Jones, and Syracuse is going to start giving fouls here. So as we draw to the final few seconds of the game, we are in the double bonus. We will be shooting two the rest of the way. And... So you're in Missouri, but you're an Arkansas fan. Interesting. So I guess you're originally from Arkansas. That's cool. I mean, Missouri actually had really good. I remember when I was in, I guess when I was in an undergrad. Missouri had really good teams. That was when Frank Haith was uh, was coaching that team, and he, he coached Miami beforehand, uh, actually. But um, yeah, and actually, that was they had a. Oh, dude, that was the year Missouri, like, lost. Oh, that was the same year we lost to Lehigh, right? That was Missouri was a two-seed, and both Duke and uh, Missouri, the two two-seeds, lost to 15s. Man, that was, like, in 2011 or something. 
2011, I think. That ooh, that was a bad year. Uh, yeah, only managing there to hit. <laughs> Here, 20. Uh, we got 38. Syracuse at the line now. We seemingly have fouled them. So for no apparent reason, because that is the absolute last thing you want to do for a team trying to get back into the game is put them on the line for a chance to score with the clock stopped. Like the clock is your friend if you're ahead. Burn it as Syracuse hits both of them. So seven point margin here. 95-88 Blue Devils with just under 40 seconds to go. Managed to inbound this. The height of Vernon Carey as Syracuse still bringing in a double team. Gets this out to Jordan Goldwire now in the front court. And Vernon Carey going to have 26 points there. And uh, Syracuse going to give Gerard going to give the foul to Trey Jones. Yeah, yeah, it was 20. It was 2011. Yeah, it was 2011. Zion Williamson probably misses Duke. You know what Zion Williamson does not miss? He may miss Duke, but then he looks at his bank account and is like, no. <laughs> uh, Trey Jones hits that first one there. Getting to, We're going to seal this thing at the line like Blue Devil teams of old used to do. I remember back in the day, it used to be automatic used to send Shire to the line, and he used to be a 92-93% free throw shooter, and that was, he would just ice the game for you. We have since lost that art a little bit. As Hughes tries for three, he hasn't been able to hit all night, and that three is no good. The rebound there to Vernon Carey. So Vernon Carey will get an additional rebound. Unfortunately, not enough to give him his 20th rebound. Only the 17th. Vernon Carey will end with 26 points and 17 rebounds as the Duke Blue Devils will go ahead and take the home, the road win in the Carrier Dome, 97 to 88. That's uh, a good win here for the Blue Devils. A tough, tough game, actually. Very physical game in the first half. Duke finding itself out of rhythm. Kind of an odd game with the assistant coaches, Smith and Shire, not being able to uh, participate in the game. But hopefully they're all right. Them and their families are all right. And there you have it. There your final from Syracuse, New York, 97-88, as Duke gets its Eighth ACC win to move into a tie with Florida State at eight and two in second place there in the ACC. Um, they're showing some crazy stat about how we have a 21% chance to win the whole NCAA tournament. This is way too early. Uh, granted, I would love to. Yes, it would be great, but it's a little early here. And um, all right. So that is it, ladies and gentlemen, for us here on Real Live Sports. I don't know if we're doing a recap show tomorrow morning. We might. If we do, it'll be at 12 Eastern time. Make sure to hit that sub button. It's totally free. It acts as a follow. You'll get notified if we do go live. If not, we will be back live next week for Duke versus UNC. And that game, I believe, is at 6 o'clock Eastern time. So uh, until then, uh, thank you very much, everybody, for watching. And thank you, everybody, who uh, – thank you for the follows so far today. And thanks for everybody who was in chat, whether you were a Duke fan or not. Appreciate you all. Here's the Carolina highlights from Sports Center for one last time as we can all go home happy tonight with a Duke win and a Carolina loss. Ooh, that is not – that did not look good. Um, thank you very much, Airhead, for the sub. Go Duke as well. We're going to cl- – oh, my goodness. Roy Williams has three timeouts. Roy has three timeouts, and he decides not to call any of them. <laughs> I love it. Every time <laughs> every time you see Carolina lo lose like that, just look at how many timeouts Roy William has. He's going to take them into retirement with him. Why not? And we're going to take this 
We're going to take this. We're going to do the highlights. We'll post the highlights here in the next few hours. Thank you very much, everybody. Good night, and go Duke.